Tom's expedition log, 1st of March, 1901. We've been on the island little more than an hour, and I've seen a dozen species of birds I am certain have never been recorded. I'm afraid my, my sketches show these beautiful creatures little justice. The Tom's Expedition Log, 1st of May, 1901. I think it was March, the last letter. Um, we discovered these strange cubes on the island. They are carved of stone, but they weigh far less than they should, and they are slightly warm to touch. One of the crew said he saw one flying a few feet above the ground. What? It's not something I would usually believe, and yet the cubes seem to give off a strange sort of energy. Tom's Expedition Log, 19th of May, 1901. I hope the professor moved the crate into the lowest hold. He doesn't want anyone to open it. I'm happy with my own treasure, this beautiful silver box I found. Crook wants it to go to the museum, but I'm feeling more and more attached to it. We depart tomorrow morning for England. 19th of May, 1901. Dearest Alice, With significant difficulty, I have gained passage aboard a vessel heading to England, SS Eurydice. It will depart Singapore on the morrow. It has been chartered by a man introduced as Professor Crook to move cargo collected on his recent expedition. His name alone. Uh, he was set to refuse me until he learned I was once an explorer. I hate this boat. Its size is like nothing imaginable. It feels empty and hollow inside. There cannot be more than 100 people on board. I met Crook's journalist, Tom, little more than a boy. He won't leave me in peace, constantly asking about my travels. I think I'm beginning to like the brat. Your faithful husband, Isaac. Beatrice's Diary, 19th of May, 1901. I shall miss Singapore, though I look forward to telling Timothy and Emma of my wonderful travels. I miss the business of loading that enormous crate onto the boat, Professor Cro uh, Crook still found time to invite me to dine with himself and some of the crew. At dinner, I met a, f a rather frightening man named Isaac. His presence seemed to fill the room. I was able to enjoy the meal thoroughly, thanks to Tom telling me all about the island which they discovered. Apparently, it is home to a long-dead civilization that explorers are bringing back artifacts to England. Uh, the explorers are bringing back artifacts to England. Crates are empty. Tom's expedition log, 20th May 1901. Beatrice let me sketch her, but she seemed a bit distracted. Beatrice's diary, 21st of May 1901. I feel scared. The people on this boat are behaving strangely. They look unwell. I hope it's merely seasickness. Expressing my concern to the professor, he offered me a visit to the lower cargo hold to see some of what is being brought to England. Thought it might ease my nerves. He was right. The air in the hold is unusual, cold, but it's not unpleasant. I felt my head clear. The way back up to the deck seemed different than before. Like something changed. Tom's Expedition Log, the 22nd of May, 1901. Isaac patiently let me draw him. I've not spoken to the captain for a while, but I think we must be somewhere near Burma by now. Tom's Expedition Log, 26th of May, 1901. I was stuck below deck for a long time. I, I, I thought I was going to be trapped forever. I found a strange mechanism which is controlled by a lever on the other side of the room. Switching it allowed objects through vertically or horizontally. Beatrice's Diary, 28th of May, 1901. I saw something moving on one of the lower decks. It looked like black mud. The air around it felt bitter and primal. It moved on its own, feeling its way across the walls and floor. I felt terribly ill and fled to the upper decks. When I returned with the others, the, the corridor was gone. It was as if it was written out of the ship's blueprints. Tom's Expedition Log, 10th of March, 1901. 
We've been on the island a while now. We discovered some beautifully preserved ruins. The temple contained illustrations of men impaled on dark colored spikes, as though they tried to leap across them. Yet one man was walking carefully between them unharmed. It's a scale model of the SS Eurydice. Tom's expedition log, 11th of March, 1901. We found many stone carvings on the walls inside the temple. The professor says the pictures tell a story. He thinks it depicts something the people who lived here were frightened of, and a powerful being which was able to fight back. Is it close? Oof. Nope. Uh, I don't think it's close. What the freak? What freaking animal was that? Is that an anchor? Tom's expedition log, 16th March 1901, found in the central chamber of the temple. The professor says these carvings show this temple is meant to keep something out. Looks to me more like it's meant to keep something inside. 25th of May 1901, dearest Alice. This bull is infected, plagued by something. It was brought back in one of those crates from the island they visited. I'm sure of it. I've been unable to convince the captain to turn around. He says the decision falls on Crook. Luckily, ugh, lucky for the basket, I haven't been able to find him. I keep getting lost below deck. I'm struggling to find my way back up to the top level. It's like the boat is alive trying to force the most difficult path. I hope I do not become trapped. I will find out what is in that crate. Your faithful husband, Isaac. Dearest Alice, um, May 1901. Dearest Alice, my headache is getting worse. I finally found my way to the lowest hold. I thought Crook's guards would have stopped me, but I couldn't see them. I found Tom. He looked sick, grasping that precious silver box of his, muttering things I did not understand. I foolishly left him where he was. Now I can't find my way back. The air down here is strange. When I finally broke open the largest crate, I felt a blast of warm air hit me. I blacked out and woke up in another part of the ship. I think I hit my head because I can't remember what happened properly. Your faithful husband. Isaac. This is new. Uh, Beatrice's diary, 1st of June, 1901. I feel cold. Like poison is taking over my body. I can hardly see through the pain to write this. I will be dead soon, I know, because Crook is dead. He is somewhere on this boat, encased in a tar-like substance. It looked like Tom was trying to help him, but the fear in Crook's eyes as Tom approached was unmistakable. Since then, I haven't seen anyone but Isaac. He found me a few hours ago. I asked him to do something unspeakable. I am not a religious woman, but I feel all I can do now is pray for my children and for Isaac. For without him, I fear there is no hope. What did you ask him to do, Beatrice? Mm. The skin has become cracked with purple residue, Log. Mother used to read to me. I'm reading now, but it's cold and lonely. I can almost feel her arms around me. June 1901? Dearest Alice, I found Beatrice. I think she is dead by now. Her skin was being covered in something dark and foul. It moved on its own. I can feel my head clearing. 
I know what must be done. Beatrice asked me to make sure the boat did not return to port carrying the corruption. I'm sure we are just drifting in the Indian Ocean, despite that I will not risk that we might be spotted and towed to land. I know how to sink the boat, and I, I need to find the boiler room. The engines have been stopped for days, so it will be difficult, but I think I can overheat the boilers and make them explode. Your faithful husband, Isaac. Tom's Expedition Log, 20th of March, 1901. This part of the totem represents soul. It reminds me a bit of the Chinese yin-yang. Crook said soul is above mind. The hands represent body. According to Crook, body is above strength. He said I could hold on to the silver box for now. Tom's Expedition Log, 20th of March, 1901. Crook said this piece of the totem represents mind. Looks more like suffering to me. According to him, mind is always above body. This shield means strength. Crook says strength is below soul. Tom's Expedition Log, 20th of March, 1901. The professor said that this carving shows that the totem is missing a piece which he calls the protector. It looks like a man with light shining out of him. 1901. It's all my fault. Everyone is dead because of me. I took the silver box from his hands. Then I started dreaming of a man made of light. He was coming to take it away from me. He was terrifying. He wanted me to return it to the totem, close it away where it belongs. When I looked inside the box, I couldn't understand what I saw. It was so dark and beautiful. I felt it escaping. Tom's Expedition Log, 31st of May, 1901. I saw Crook die. He was covered in something like tar. As I approached, he shouted at me to stay away from him. He didn't want to get me too. I can't find my way back to the upper decks. I don't know what to do. Tom's Expedition Log. I can't move. I can feel the darkness rooting me. It doesn't want to go back. I can't fix this. I'm sorry. Alice, the boat will sink soon. The boilers are overheated and overpressured. I am certain they will explode within minutes, and yet I refuse to die in the explosion. I keep trying to remember the moment I opened the crate. The thing inside felt alive. I can feel its warmth flooding my veins. I remember I heard a voice when I opened it. It was a language I could not understand. I do not know why I continue to write to you, despite knowing you can never reply. Your faithful husband, Isaac. Dearest Alice, I can see the sky. How is that possible? I am certain I was in the depth of the boat a moment ago. I can remember the thing inside the crate better. It was a stone head. I feel like it wants me to do something. There are diving suits here. If there is a god, he has a cruel sense of humor. I just heard the boilers explode. I love you. And the developers recently were able to uh, put an update on the game to let us know what exactly the ending meant. So, you have sealed in the darkness. And you're able to see that the creatures are going away. And have been cast in stone to remain its eternal guardian. And that's the end of the game. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys, for our final playthrough of Reveal the Deep. Thank you so much, Lazy Monday Games. <laughs> Y'all get a lot of questions and requests on Steam, so I really appreciate y'all putting in that update. I 
it took me hours like going through this game knowing just knowing that those last two rooms that there was a way that I can get into those last two rooms I wish I recorded all the crap I went through <laughs> um we're trying to figure it out but that's fine I the atmosphere the tension I felt throughout the game the lighting the, the ambient sounds uh, the way that sometimes the creaking of the ship sounded like um, the song Amazing Grace y'all y'all are ridiculous I cannot believe that this game was less than a dollar um, thank you again and thank you to my <laughs> my 13 subscribers lucky number 13 um, thank you so much for being so supportive and so patient with me. Um, Y'all rock. <laughs> Y'all have an amazing week. Bye, guys.